Hello everyone. It's been a while since we've done one of these. I think it's probably the absolute worst time <laughs> to do a live stream. Um, you know, in terms of like when everyone's available. But look, it's Friday. I can't really do it tonight. Um, so if you're around, good. Um, what I want to basically put out there is is have a feel free at this point to just kind of put your questions out there. Um, we'll get into kind of my thoughts on what I think XRP is doing. Um, all kinds of stuff, whatever you want to talk about, really. Uh, the live replay of the chat on YouTube, anyway, is going to be available at all times. So make sure you're checking that if you're watching later on. Um, hey, Legalam, trip around the world. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Predicted timeline. Um, so let's talk about timeline for XRP then. Um, so in my opinion, based on the conversations that I've had, and I've had conversations with R3 and lots of other uh, companies that are actually hands-on in this space, um, it's not early for me. It's uh, actually later on in my day. It's 3 o'clock p.m. for me. Um, and so let's start Let's start with the whole idea that XRP is going to, the court case is going to increase the price like crazy. Let's start with that, okay? Let's start there. So I want to kind of point out that typically in the movement for XRP, it usually happens towards the end of the year. And especially when you look at the way the price moves each year on year, it's usually October, November, December that are really good. May, Jan, May, June, July are usually really bad, right? So that has been the case for all, all the time, right? The, the market has never gone up without XRP and XRP has never gone up without the market. So that's how we are right now. That's the, the situation we live in right now. We don't live in this utility environment. We live in, a, in the speculation environment. Um, the one thing holding back utility, well, two things, is, are the regulations. And uh, so regulations are a big thing, actually, because it's not just the idea of, oh, we have to have regulation for the US or the UK, whatever it is, it's we need a regulation specifically for UK to US, US to UK, US to India, India to US, but that for every country. So that's a massive thing to, to undertake if you're if you're working on regulation in regulatory interoperability, that's a massive monumental undertaking. Um, and so we actually have timelines for regulation. That's the great thing about this. We have the actual timelines posted. I've talked about them in previous videos. Hey, Alan. Um, uh, and, and Keda, thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, and Galtham. Okay, so we have these documents out and they all suggest that the end of 2025, is when we start to see the use of uh, the wholesale CBDCs. After that, ranging from 2025 to 2027, we start to see use of retail CBDCs, right? And so when you look at the whole kind of progress of everything, we understand that... Um, the regulatory interoperability is what we're waiting for here. Um, that's nowhere near. And we understand that the prices don't typically move during the summer. To me, this, this suggests, and also based on conversations, that if we do see increase in price this year, it's only going to be because of the, the court case. And I do believe it would be temporary. I think it would be a temporary move 
if the price did increase because of the court case. So I talked about this on a one-on-one -on -one call yesterday. You know, when you when you lay the Fibonacci's down and you look at those retracement levels of where, you know, typically when good news happens um, or, or monumental news happens, it usually moves to the retracement levels right there in the middle. Um, you know, the 618, 702 levels. Um, that's where it would typically go up to. So I would imagine that when the court case gets resolved, um, the price goes up to the retracement levels. But because we're still in speculation mode, it comes back down. Um, and so, you know, when you look at the court case and how long things can take to play out, I don't know when that is. Um, but it would make sense based on history that this news would come at the end of the year, October, November, December, because that would make sense for a pump in crypto in general at the end of the year that would perfectly coincide with the court case resolution and then come back down for the start of the new year. And then we're kind of just waiting for not just the regulatory interoperability, but also the technological interoperability because they're still trying to figure out how to technologically link in interoperability to allow the payments across all different blockchains. It's, it's like really, really tough. And they're figuring that out right now. So I, one thing I will say is that if the court case resolves sooner rather than later, like sooner than the end of the year, we still have to wait for interoperability. Um, so price at the end of the year, I have no idea. Um, I would anticipate some movement this year, but only because the court case. And it would, again, in my opinion, be temporary. Um, okay, lots going on in the in the chat here. Um, on all over the place. Um, Brittany, that's a good question. Uh, thanks for being here. I'm interested in understanding where you get your information about trust plans and LLC infrastructure insights that uh, have helped you develop your plan. Are there YouTube channels you'd recommend? Um, specifically YouTube channels, not, not really. There's not really anyone out there like specifically talking about crypto. Um, with that said, I do talk about this and I'm absorbing information from Beyond Broke. That's Jacob Claver, um, really good source of information, that guy. So if you type on TikTok or YouTube, Beyond Broke, you'll, you'll find him. I also did an interview with him about trusts um, on my Discord uh, server for the members only. There was a members only, like members insights thing. Um, and we had people come up and ask him questions. It was really, really useful. Uh, what are your thoughts on a good country for crypto to live in? Um, uh, there's a few places. You've got Dubai. You've got uh, the Caribbean offers lots of opportunity there. They, they kind of have a, an amount you have to pay or invest in the country in order to get status, in order to get the, the tax benefits. Um, then there's the Cayman Islands, which I really like the look of. Um, yeah. Um, Chappers says, let's face it. You don't know anything about XRP price forecast, do you? <laughs> Nobody does, buddy. Um, do I think that 2025 will still be the full adoption deadline? Um, no. So that 2025 thing, it was actually 18 to 24 months that I was told. Um, that actually there would be pockets of utility being rolled out at that point. So pockets, not full utility. I think, I actually don't even know when full utility is going to come out. Um, that's, a, that's a mind bend there. Hey, Becky, thanks for being here again. Uh, Crypto D, I actually, it's a good question. Um, I don't really want to get into that because I think people should make their own th thing, decisions about their own kind of uh, pension plans and stuff. 
Um, but there will be, there will be. I think you have to be 55 though to actually do anything with it. Hey, Chris Atwood at work. Thank you for coming. Oh, Nyan. Interesting. So Nyan there in the chat on YouTube said that, um, made a comment because she, they've obviously watched my interview uh, on Beyond the Brink. So thanks for watching that one. Um, we can tr probably try and get the link to that if anyone's interested. Um, I put it on my on my YouTube community posts. I was in an interview. And it was nice because we didn't really talk about crypto that much, which was good. Quite like that. Um, so I'm not going to... My, my prediction... I think it was... Oh, wait, let me see. Um... I'm just going to get it on my screen here, um, even though you won't be able to see it. But my rationale about the price pump after the court case um, is completely based on uh, having having XRP move up to normal retracement levels. Um, and so normal retracement levels go everywhere from kind of Normal retracement. Yeah, $1.95 all the way up to $3. Um, that would make most sense for a speculation pump, which is what it would be. Um, I believe it would then just come back down. And then we would, after it comes down for the rest of the year or whatever it is, uh, then we start the, the kind of the, the bull run. Um, Makes most most sense to me, but like I don't know, it's it's all a guess, really, isn't it? Um, Mrs. Lam and Jammin, uh, are you familiar with the ability for us to finally reclaim our birth certificate and identity? Yes, uh, I am familiar with that. I have a friend going through that process himself. Um, more on that later. Not really at that stage of my life, but I'm very interested in it. It's worth going down that kind of rabbit hole, I think. Um, oh yeah, so what's happening with, with XRP, right? <laughs> that was, that was the, the point of this. So it's just my opinion. You're free to have your own opinions and thoughts on, on where this is all gonna go. Um, but it makes most sense for me for us to have a little bit more time down, down to this low, or even a, a, even lower lows um, than we are currently at, right? Um, it makes most sense to me because we're heading into summer for the price to continue to go down. Um, and I will say with full transparency, I've got I've got all of my buy orders of my remaining uh, USDT um, at at thirty six cents. I'll be very open about that. My, I've got all my buy orders at 36 cents, and that will be the last batch of um, XRP that I buy. Um, and sure, we could go lower. We might never go lower, but here I am. Um, perfection in heaven. What financial background or qualifications do I have, and how many years have I been involved with finance? I have no qualifications only a background of lots of research and intense interest. There you go. Uh, but I never do financial advice, so I'm not, not worried about that question. Um, why is it my last buy of XRP? Just because, um, you know, I've got enough... I've reached my targets. Um, you know, I reached what I wanted to reach and I've reached that already. And I would just, I felt like I needed to diversify. And it's a perfect time to tell you all, actually, now that we're here, tonight's video that is being currently uploaded. Uh, let me have a look to see if it is uploaded yet. Um, is me sharing my portfolio. How about that? So the title of the video that I'm uh, going to be putting out is like, uh, 
sharing my portfolio. Um, and actually, I'm going to get out, get that all scheduled. Um, I thought that might be an interesting video that everyone would want to watch. Um, you can see what I've uh, diversified into. Um, all of that stuff. I just thought it might be interesting for everyone. Um, <laughs> yeah, what's in the bag but crypto? Uh, I don't have any XPR. Um, at the beginning, AC, I had invested in meme coins just because you don't know what you're doing at the beginning. It's, uh, meme coins, I think, are like the... They are the actual kind of lottery ticket rather than, you know, like the smart decision, if you know what I mean. Well, Nico, you really want that question answered, don't you? Where should we go to escape the 15-minute cities, CBDCs, and total control? You either go to Dubai or probably just go to Miami because <laughs> I don't see Miami doing that. You can stop asking the question now. Uh, perfection in heaven, that's a good level-headed way to look at things. I appreciate it. Um, lots of people give me hate. I'm kind of just over it now, so I'm not, I'm not too bothered. Uh, before it affected me and it hurt, but I'm not too bothered now. Uh, do I ever think e uh, Amazon will ever partner or work with Ripple? Yes, I do. Yeah, I do. I do. I think they've already tested it too. Um, WJLon, uh, do we see massive price appreciation this year? Uh, I don't. I don't know about massive. Uh, depends. Depends what your perspective is, right? If you think going from here to three dollars is is massive, then yeah, sure, maybe. <laughs> and if you think uh, going from here to a dollar is massive. Yeah, sure, maybe. I have no idea. We, we, I don't know. Um, am I going to XRP Vegas next year? I would like to. I would like to go. Um, I just didn't have the didn't have the time this time. Thankfully, it looked like just a big selfie fest, so everyone kind of uh, just goes and takes selfies with each other, <laughs> which I guess is fun. You meet people and stuff. That's good. Thank you, Beardy Bam, for saying my hair looks nice. I kind of, kind of woke up like this, actually, but here we are. Um, do I think they're dragging out the SEC case to allow for the Fed now launch? I think they're dragging it out for other reasons. That's just one reason that kind of fits in well as well. Um, Yeah, my, my, the video tonight will be quite good, you know. Um, I'll try and be there live in the chat for everyone. Thank you, XRP Captain. Uh, Becky, I have tried to get Alan, to get me on Alan's or an Alan on mine, but he doesn't respond to me. I, d I just don't think he likes me. <laughs> I don't think, I, d I don't think he likes me for some reason. I I've, I've, I've loved watching his videos, his kind of long form videos, but I don't know. You, you try and get him for me. I, I, I'm not having any luck. Um, so Black Bart, um, so, um, and Becky, yes, I have nothing getting, I'm getting nothing back. Hey, Pavel, 
Um, so what was that question? Um, am I going to sell or collateralize my XRP? So big distinction between those two is one suggests that you're not married to XRP and the other one suggests you are. Um, I, in this situation, am on the married to side. Um, but you'll see on tonight's video how much of a hedge I'm putting on XRP. Um, the hedge was larger before, but I've distributed into other assets or grown or added added funds into other assets, not from my XRP, um, that kind of reduced my overall XRP percentage. Um, so the idea would be that I would be collateralizing or maybe loaning out my XRP um, rather than selling. But I will be selling basically everything else in my portfolio. So, you know, if I look at, if I look at kind of the percentages of overall, if I sold everything except XRP, you know, it's quite, it's a decent take profit amount. So that's, that's kind of my, my reasoning for that. That's a good question about creating trusts and how that might be influenced by um, how you do that when you reclaim your birth certificate process. Yeah, I know. It's all uh, it's all difficult. It's all it's all a mind bend. Um, Crypto Taro Taro on TikTok here has just said uh, XRP plus Stellar plus Polysign plus Hold <laughs> equals retirement. What an equation! Um, Leo, I kind of answered that uh, earlier. So go back. <laughs> um, have I bought any gold? I do have some gold. I have, actually, this is interesting. I have as much gold as I have Bitcoin. but you'll have to watch the video tonight <laughs> to see that. Um, MS, I'm gonna save my answer about what my portfolio is for the video because it's in the video. Let me, let me get the link for everyone. I, I need to actually even title the video before I send it to you. All right, let me, right, I'm going to, I'm actually going to schedule this video. So it's the normal time, 7.45 in the UK. I'll make it a nice little premiere here. Okay, I'm saving that. Uh, copy the link. I'm going to put it in the chat here. That's the video to kind of set your reminders for. Um, A8D. Uh, the question is, if XRP goes to 10K, why wouldn't the cor corporations buy every XRP right now? Um, from my understanding, it's actually because there is no clarity on regulation. Uh, completely. Um, there is also a theory out there that this 1,700 uh, contracts that are in the escrow are there um, allocated to institutions and those who will need it. So they actually have no need to buy XRP, or at least they, they won't be buying XRP. There are plenty other ways to make lots of money for an institution than buying this, the asset. Um, I'm not saying, like, I think you probably should, uh, if you're the corporation, buy the asset so that you it can be used for its utility. Um, but there may also be restrictions on, on institutions buying. Um, 
because you know if, if the escrow for example is allocated to 1700 in uh uh what do you call it companies that also part of that agreement might be you can't buy any of the secondary market who knows um medellin in the uh tiktok chat said everything is a theory i think complaining that i just talk about theories that's all it is buddy hey what is going on i've got i've got a hat um everything's a theory until it completes and then we look back at it and go oh that theory was correct <laughs> that was literally that's the only way to look at it um SBF's cellmate. <laughs> uh, what a name. Uh, Lewis, your thoughts on blockchain backer saying XRP going as low as 33 cents again. I stopped buying, but will buy again if it reaches that price again. Um, I think it, is, it makes sense. I think he goes on to it from a structural standpoint. And I think the structure says uh, that would be the case, or at least the percentage chances are that it, that would be the case. Um, I, I come at it from uh, summer is bad, end of the year is usually good. So if you take that theory, again, another theory, um, you would imagine the price to come down uh, a little bit. So yeah, 36 cents is where I've got all of my buy orders. <clears throat> And, and look, for, for me, if 36 cents gets hit, I'll go, great, I've just picked up some more XRP. And if it doesn't, mm, I've got the XRP I wanted to get in the first place. So crypto talk now. Thank you very much for sharing my content for over a year. Um, AI, good or bad for crypto? I think AI is good for crypto. Hey, Casey. Uh, Becky, so all I know about kind of court case resolution could happen anytime soon. Um, and also the one AI is not overrated. It's incredibly underrated. <laughs> People just don't know how to use it yet. Um, uh, Becky, so we've been hearing the court case could resolve any day now for so long. I think it's probably worth just not listening to that side of things. Um, and just doing your best to be prepared from an accumulation standpoint for the bull run, whenever that happens. Um, AC, I do have I do have some shirts coming out and, and some shorts, some David shorts. <laughs> so funny. Um, it's not ready yet. It's been so delayed and it's still not ready. It's, it's, it's really tough, but um, I'm thinking what I'm actually gonna do for this, for this new launch of the clothing um, is have an actual limited supply. Um, it's a, it's a real headache in the background to do that to do it properly like i'm doing it properly if i i could just go onto like uh some print on demand website and just put my design on there and say here it is and sell it um but it's not good it's like it's just it's just like copy paste what i'm doing is i have a manufacturer i have a, had a designer i want my own labels my own tags like i want it all really well done and that just takes so much more time than i thought um uh are wood in the oliver Toussaint? <laughs> i don't know how to say that whole name but thank you for the two dollars is forty thousand xrp enough um i think if you just look percentage wise at what most people own uh, in terms of amount, that's the way you could compare yourself. 
what what's good for you is not good for someone else and what's not good for you is really good for someone else so i can't tell you whether it's a good bag or not but percentage based on percentages you can tell which side of the curve you're on are you on the side that have less than most or do you have the same as most or do you have more than most that's the only way you can kind of answer that question um if you want a refund for that i can send you a refund Um, Leo, the most important thing for XRP's price to go up is uh, interoperability actually technologically being possible and functioning and regulatory clarity allowing institutions to hold XRP so they can use it, taking XRP out of supply so the price goes up. Um, Crypto Mike, thanks for being here. Um, so what I would do is go over to my... Uh, I, I posted a video a little while ago, um, last week or something, talking about um, the the actual best way to explain what XRP is and how an XRP price goes up. So I I would urge you to go and look at that. If someone else has got the link for that, please put that in the in the chat. Luke Jor Jordan, well that might have been a really British way to say it, but um, I know who you are. I just never said your name out loud. Um, are you not a little numb to everything at the moment, waiting for court case to end and SCC pursuing the unpursuable and the FUD spread by all? Um, I will say, Luke, yes, um, quite, <laughs> uh, quite numb to it all. Um, what should I say? What can I say? What can't I say? What should I say? What shouldn't I say? These are the questions. Hmm. Let me let me say this because if you if you watch the um we are going to have a 5 eating 9 so 589 design but it, I, whether it's on this drop or not I don't know I'll actually try and make it on this drop. Um so on the on the topic of being numb to everything there's a real problem here in that I've gone so deep on the YouTube channel and, and on the videos that we've gone, we, we basically can look at any kind of document now and we can go, oh, well, we know if that's important or we know if that's not important. Because if, if they say, oh, this new token and uh, it doesn't settle, but it does this and we go, okay, well, how does it settle? There's the answer. Um, oh, look, another bank partners with Ripple or oh, another country is in talks with Ripple. Here's another uh, pilot document about Ripple. It's like, yeah, we know. At this point, it, I feel like we just know all of this stuff. Um, so that's kind of where I, I feel like things are. I feel like the audience in here are just really well informed and they, everyone knows what's going on. There's really, it's very, really, very tough to teach this audience more about XRP than they already know. I feel like we're, we're mostly unfuddable, so we can't be fudded out. Um, we know, uh, Rodney, I'll get there in a sec. Um, you know, it's, it's just really tough right now for XRP content, especially deep dive content, because there's not much more we can deep dive into. Oh, um, Melissa, can you put the chat, the the um, the link to our conversation? I think it gives people more uh, context uh, for kind of the next answer to, to my questions. Um, but anyway, because I feel like the, the bull run is going to be soon, um, in that, you know, at least the bottom of the market being the ultimate time to, to invest has been uh, been around us right now and maybe is to come as well. It's the prime opportunity to start educating beginners. Um, I, I say this because we've all in the bear run moved past the point of being beginners, all of you you're all more than beginners now. Um, and so 
what happens is, is that if newbies come into the space right now, they get left behind because we're talking about stuff that's ridiculous, um, like ridiculously complex. And so my brain is really wanting to focus on the beginners, um, bringing people into this space because at some point soon, um, the big transfer of wealth is going to happen. And if that is the case, um, you know, if I actually want to make an impact and educate people, right, which is like the overall mission, then I need to focus on the beginners, right? Because we're going to be, we're going to leave them behind um, just by our, our knowledge of everything. And so the thing that's exciting me right now is the idea that I can, I can uh, educate uh, the beginners. So we might, we might see things like that, uh, that the content may be mold to, to more like uh, beginner friendly topics, but I'm doing my best to kind of um, make sure that everyone who's already here kind of gets value from them as well. And that's quite a hard, quite a hard balance to, to balance. <laughs> um, so Rodney, how's your mental health with all these questions? and expectations from your audience has to be exhausting. Um, it was, it was exhausting. Uh, right now, my complete mindset is focused on how can I adapt my content for beginners? Um, and that's actually the stressful part. Because I want to do all of that without alienating those who are already here you know it's quite it's quite difficult so that all of my thoughts um all of my thoughts are going on that side Lego Lamb, can't you just put that it's a beginner video in the title? Sure, could do that. Could do that, absolutely. Um, the problem with putting beginner in the title is that everyone who's already here won't watch it, and then the video doesn't get the reach. So then it kind of like is less effective. But I get your I get your point. Um, Winston, I didn't go to Vegas because I just didn't have the time. Um, Saiwali, um, in some capacity, yeah in some capacity, I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah, I think the basics are really important. Sometimes, um, and that has taken up a lot of my time, right? That be the beginner element, so. Yeah, perhaps the, the videos are set, uh, titled in such a way where it kind of urges everyone who's already here to, to share the video because it's for beginners. Uh, maybe that's maybe that's the way to do it. Yeah, Kevin, I'm doing the beginners videos in, in the shorts uh, already. You, you might have noticed that. Um, Harry asked, which one of these fake Lewises is this? Well, this is the real one. Um, just a little kind of announcement for everyone. If you get a message from, from me or fake me, just look at the just look at the username. It's Crypto Lulu, and that's it, like nothing else. So 
So if it's Lou, Lou, crypto Lou dot Lou, it's not me. I only have one account. Don't, don't fall for that stuff. Jaggy, I appreciate that. I do try, actually. Uh, Stephen says, this is a great one. Um, XRP got a future or what, Lou? <laughs> Most frustrating coin ever. <laughs> yep. Yep. 99% of the time, XRP is flat or going down. 1% <laughs> it goes crazy up. Uh, no predictions for quant. I haven't looked at it close enough. Also, oh, something on quant actually. XRP. All the ISO, XRP, XLM, XDC, everything, none of that works properly as it should without quant. But is quant the one to have the price increase like more than the others? Who knows? That's the, that's the tough thing. But just understand that XRP can't do it on its own. XLM can't do it on its own. They all have to work together as an ecosystem. Um, Amanda, what would you like me to explain more of? Uh, if you want, you can DM and I can help there. Um, I'm really behind. Yeah, there's so many comments. I don't know. I can't. I'm struggling here. I will say, if, uh, if there's any um, XRPL developers in here, uh, I know that's a long shot because they're quite far and few between. I've got a really, really kind of niche use case for the XRPL that I'd really like to run things by people. So please DM me wherever you wherever you are. Uh, do I believe in Nisara Jasara? Not really. Uh, yes, this is my this is my full time thing. Yeah, um, I would say. Uh, <laughs> how can I say this? I would say about twenty five percent of my effort goes into the videos and 75% of my effort goes into everything that it takes to keep, keep the business alive. <laughs> it's just, uh, there's so much that happens on the other side of the camera. Um, do I believe in love after love? Um, yeah. <laughs> I do like XLM. A dog bowl in my ceiling. Thanks. Uh, Becky, I'm actually, I was supposed to be talking to Black Swan Capitalist today. So I'm going to message him after this and see what's going on. Um, No problem, Lego Lamb. Alf Alfred Foto, thank you for being here and, and for watching with your son as well. Uh, 
Um, so I think what I'm going to do here is uh, keep this video below 50 minutes. <laughs> um, just understand there's lots of things that I'm working on in the background here. Um, a lot of it is beginner centric, um, but I would really, really appreciate. Um, and, and let me just say, if there's anything really interesting that I really want to deep dive, then I'm going to deep dive it. Um, and so like that content won't go away. Um, and so, you know, I would appreciate it if whenever you see some beginner style content, just to share it with someone uh, that you think might benefit. <laughs> Susie, I've been on their show twice now. Um, I would do a third time. Um, it's kind of not really my vibe, you know, that that show. It's quite like newsy and I don't really have much to contribute on the news front. Um, I've been watching your videos for a while now. Bucket man, five pounds. Uh, where is a good place to start with my own research of XRP? Um, so I'm going to outline this framework in a beginner video. Um, and I think it's really interesting. I'll give you the answer here, though. Um, so I think the first thing that you, if you're really interested in learning about XRP, you've got to learn about banking. So um, what I would do is do what I did, because that's just what I did. I went to the Bank of England website and I read the whole website. I learned every word that was said on the website. Once I made it through the website, I understood what banking was. And I also understood where the problems with banking were too. Um, once you can understand the problem, you can understand why the solution is so important and which solutions are truly the solution to the problem. Um, so if you want to learn about XRP, learn about banking. Um, and you can follow my kind of um, my blueprint there, which is read the whole Bank of England website. <laughs> um, that's kind of my unique way of doing it. But that's how I would start. Um, and only when you truly understand the, um, the problem with banking and the solution to that, then you start looking at maybe I invest now. Uh, other nomad, I should do a deep dive about XLS 30D, potentially, uh, and 38D as well. Maybe, maybe I will. Uh, if it interests me enough, I will do it. Uh, Funky Fruities, uh, thanks for watching. Is it worth contacting a high net worth accountant now? No. There's your answer really quickly. And do I just start a company? Um, I did. I just start, I started my company just because I've actually got other things going on for the company as well. Um, I would say it would be reasonable to start a company for your assets. but make sure you talk to your accountant about the transfer of those assets to the company and the tax implications of that. That would be what I would be asking. Um, but in terms of like the full structure of the company, like a trust holding company, companies underneath for different assets, I would worry about that once the money's come in. Uh, not something to worry about right now, I don't think. Um, Alfred, what do I think of Coach JV's perspectives? I, I don't know what perspectives. Um, I like I like him. He was fun to talk to. Um, I think he's quite got a load of experience. I would happily talk to him again. Um, in fact, I wanted to go and see him uh, in person while I was over at the States, but I was in the wrong place. Um, but I don't I don't know. I, I don't know like loads about other creators, to be honest.
Anyway, I appreciate all your support, your continued support. Um, just wanted to get, you know, what, what what's in my head right now, where the business is is going, where I actually think I can have most impact. Um, yeah, you know, so I would be greatly appreciate the support there. Um, uh, Craig Clark, have I invested in PolySign yet? You all want to watch my video tonight. <laughs> um, I'm linking you to it here. Just put it in the chat. That's the video tonight. Um, make sure, uh, Melissa, if you can put the link to the video of our interview in here as well, that'd be that'd be great. Um, thank you all for being here and supporting and all of that good stuff. Oh, let's figure this out. I've got to turn the phone off. I'm streaming on here. Can I figure it out? Yeah, that's ended. Um, uh, just go and watch the uh, on my on my YouTube community tab. You'll see me. I posted about the interview that I was on. Um, go and watch that and support it. Click like and everything. Um, I would love to, I actually would seriously love to interview Quincy. But again, no response. I don't know what I've done. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I love the, I think these guys are great and smart and no one's, no one's answering me. Anyway, stay emotionless and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>